My lipstick looks orange. Okay, we're <laughs> live. That's great. Oh, of course. Now everyone heard that I said my lipstick looks orange. Well, you know what? You look fabulous. <laughs> so everyone, welcome to Goal Chat Live. I'm Deborah Eckerly. I'm the author of Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals, and founder of The Dev Method. And I'm so excited because today on Goal Chat, I get to hang out with my friend Vivica von Rosen, and you all get to watch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Vivica and I, well, we've been friends for years. Yeah. Like years. Years and, and years. Year, well, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> like a hundred years. No, but I mean, like since social media marketing world, probably. So what, six years, seven years, eight years? Yeah. I th yeah. I think, I think six or so. Doesn't matter. We should have done the math before. So Vivica and I have been friends for a while. <laughs> And whenever the, and we end up talking about LinkedIn on Goal Chat, usually yep. two, three times a year, whether it's yep. specifically about LinkedIn or just certain things. I think we did reviews and recommendations once or testimonials and recommendations. So LinkedIn is important, but it's never been more important than now because everything has never been more important than now. Yeah, that's exactly right. And whenever I think about LinkedIn, I think about Viv because she is the, the be all end all when it comes to LinkedIn. So I bet you could like give your background a little bit better than that. So why don't, <laughs> why don't you share your actual bio? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like that bio. Um, yeah. So I've been teaching and training on, on training on LinkedIn for 14 years. Um, learned about it from a friend of mine who was teaching us about web 2.0. So that shows you how long ago it was. Um, eight years. No, wait, today is 2020. So <laughs> that would have been, I don't know. I can't do math. That would have been 14 years ago. It had been 2006. That's right. So anyway, I do LinkedIn, not math. Um, and yes, yeah, you mentioned this thing called LinkedIn. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. We doubled our business in a year doing face-to-face -face networking. So what could this thing called LinkedIn do? And it was pre-Facebook, pre-Twitter, um, and I just thought, this is a really cool business tool. And so I learned as much as I could about it. Um, long story short, 12 years later, I've got a couple books on LinkedIn, and I get to <laughs> get hosted on Deborah's Facebook Live. I, I almost said LinkedIn Live. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here, but it's been, it's been, it's been fun. But it's interesting because we've almost gone the opposite of full circle, I guess 180. Because when I first started, <laughs> see again, no math, geom geometry, just like don't even. Uh, when we first started, right, it was all about face-to-face -face and, and networking events and um, chamber events and things like that. And so this thing called LinkedIn was really weird, like what, it, what, what do you mean have an online relationship? Like we're not dating. Um, and, you know, and then fast forward, however many years we decided it was 14 years. And now it's like, we're not allowed to go to face-to-face -to -face events and we're not allowed to go to conferences and we're not allowed to go to chamber events, you know, at least for a short foreseeable future. And so things like LinkedIn are more important than ever. Well, and then the other, well, first of all, I just realized I've been on LinkedIn longer than you have. <laughs> there you go. See? Too That's bad. Funny. No, I'm kidding. That's... I remember really distinctly because I was reading a book. It was, I believe it was a guerrilla marketing book. And yes. in the book, it said, stop what you're doing and join LinkedIn. So I stopped what I was doing and joined LinkedIn because, you know, and if the so book said is, it. You know what's <laughs> interesting is Al... Um, who I had, that's so weird. Like I literally haven't thought about Al, nothing, nothing against Al. Um, but Al Louton Slogger, I'm saying, I'm totally massacring his last name, was co author with, um, I think it was Les of, of that book. And he was one of my first connections that I made on LinkedIn because there weren't very many of us. So who, we had that in common. Who knew? Wow. Yeah, everything is full circles. Exactly. Z, and now we're into geometry. So Never. let's get back to LinkedIn. <laughs> but it, the other thing about LinkedIn, yes, we are so, and I must have this conversation three times a day, so <laughs> let's get it in. If we didn't have technology now, 
right. we'd be way more lost yeah, yeah. than we are already. Yeah. So it's really, it's like extra helpful, but yeah. there are ways to use LinkedIn that can, can make it even better, more visible. Um, oh, and do you have, we have a question from oh. Glamsis Boyd. I hope I pronounced that right. Do you have any advice on how to get rid of emus? There's a bunch in my yard and every time I go out, they chase me, they're very fast. <laughs> Yes, I will lend Callaway. Come here. I will lend you my dog, and okay. Callaway will for sure chase away all the emus. We we got you covered. Okay, and now back to LinkedIn. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it was. I, we you said someone, they could ask any question they wanted. <laughs> you know, and someone tried to buy Steve Dotto's couch. That's the comment thread that was going on when he was on a few weeks ago to talk about video. But now I think we're getting even more off track. So let's, I'm reining us in. Um, and the question to start with is that how do you use LinkedIn? And I'm going to answer first because my answer is going to be a lot shorter. Um, because in, it, I should also mention that, so Vivica, among everything else is the chief visibility officer and co-founder of Ingresso. And I am one of the profile writers. And that was just, it's like, cool, I get to work with Viv. That so, was awesome. You know, that was pretty awesome. So um, I'm going to let you explain, you know, the Ingresso way. But even before, so when I'm doing my answers, I try and do it as me, not as right. me of Ingresso. But the way I've always used LinkedIn is as a Rolodex. When you meet yep. people, you Google them, you look for them on LinkedIn, you write a little note and connect because connection is so important and you never know where connection will lead. So you should connect with everybody you meet. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Except not. Yes. Okay. No. Um, so I mean, yes and no. So first of all, it, it's so important to make sure that you've got your brand properly, um, properly. <laughs> this chat's cracking me up. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it off for a second, and I'm gonna come back to it. Um, it's so important that you that you really represent yourself the way that you want to. Number one, so that you attract the right people to your profile. Um, a lot of times, people think, well, the more connections I have, or the more people that I can reach out. But it's all social media is so noisy that you really want to focus on and attract just the individuals or the companies that are your best prospects. So the first thing that you want to do is really write your profile with them in mind. A lot of times people think about, you know, uh, my resume, I'm going to upload my resume. Um, because, you know, when LinkedIn started out, it really, which was actually 17 years ago in 2003, it really was a job seeking site more than anything else for the Silicon Valley. Um, but it has since transformed a lot since then. So you need to move it from a resume to a resource where your buyers, your audience can go to your profile, read through your profile, recognize themselves in your profile because you'll be, t you'll be speaking to them directly about how you can help them. What are their points of pain? How can you serve them? So, that's really what the first shift that you want to make is focus on your buyer, not on yourself, and then make your profile a resource, not a resume. And then to that point, you don't want to be just connecting with everybody for two reasons, three reasons. There's a limit. You can only have 30,000 connections in a lifetime. And you might think 30,000, I'm never going to get there. But you will. I mean, unless LinkedIn in, in increases that, if you continue to do business and you continue to engage with people on LinkedIn, eventually you will hit that number. And then you're going to have to pay your assistant two to $300 a month to get rid of people. Um, and then she's going to get rid of your husband. And then your husband's going to get mad at you. So not that that happened that to happen? me. But <laughs> my, Nicole, Nicole went through and she was deleting people. And I don't think she was being as careful as she, she was supposed to be. She deleted Alan. I went to send Alan a message and I'm like, second level okay. connection, what? <laughs> so, you, so you need to be discerning. Um, so when someone does invite you to connect or you invite them to connect, take the time to pop through, look at their profile, make sure it is someone that you can actually 
work with or who can work with you. And that will, you know, and, and then, yeah, go ahead and take that relationship forward. And one of the things, one of the techniques that we teach is don't just go out and invite a bunch of people to connect. Do not automate your connection <laughs> strategy on LinkedIn. I, I know there's people that share a bunch of that information, but, and, and automation tools, but it, it'll, eventually shut down your account. Um, so then all that work would be worth nothing. Um, but also it's just, it's spammy. So having a quality network of qualified leads is so much more important than having a great big network. You want to find the people that you want to connect with. And there's various ways and we can talk about that later, but you want to engage with them first. If they're sharing content um, or maybe they're a thought leader and you mention their book or their article or their movie or whatever in your own LinkedIn feed and tag them. And you kind of create that awareness. Um, we always say, you know, our friend Bob Berg, all things being equal, people do business with and refer people they know, like and trust. So you you want to at least create the no and maybe a little bit of the trust before you reach out and invite folks to connect. And then the third reason you want to be um, discerning about the people that you reach out and connect or reach out and engage with is because LinkedIn's algorithm has changed. So maybe once upon a time, having 30,000 connections was awesome. And, you know, anything that you put out there in your newsfeed would get tens of thousands of views and you were a rock star. Um, but that's not the case anymore. LinkedIn looks at your, your content and it looks at how many people, what percentage of people in your uh, network and in your connections are engaging on that article before it ever, or on that post, before it opens it up to your greater audience. And so, you know, if I have 30,000 people in my network, but only 30 people are reacting, it's a lot worse than having 3,000 or 300 people in my network and 30 people reacting. So the person with 3,000 or 300 people in their network, LinkedIn's going to see that engagement and amplify it significantly more than, you know, my article with 30 people engaged on it. So that's another reason why you want to be more discerning with the people that you invite or who you accept, because you want people who are going to engage with you, not just someone who's, you know, trying to get it bigger, <laughs> as it were. Okay. I, I like, I like the philosophy. I like the numbers game. It all makes sense, but I feel like I should revise my answer. Cause I feel like my answer was wrong. So I, <laughs> I, well, and this is my philosophy about it. And, and it's and your you, life. So you can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> well, I go to, and one of the things in this world we live in now is I go to more networking events and I was pretty social before, but I am extremely social now. And I end up on a couple different mixers every week and the people that I like, I'm going to connect to because, yeah. and this is one thing that I've said for years and years is the people that you meet might not be your client. Yeah. They know people, everybody, you know, knows more people. So if you're building your network, not necessarily with potential prospects, but with good connections, it could evolve and it could lead to, et cetera. So with yeah. that revision, am I good? Yeah, I think you're good. And and I'm glad you said that. LinkedIn used to have a tool and an introduction tool. And um, I'm kind of glad they got rid of it because it sucked. But you can still use LinkedIn for for introductions. So it is good to have some of those super connectors, as long as you actually think they know the people in your network, so that I could reach out to you and say, hey, I noticed, you know, you know, Amy um, Landino, would you be willing to introduce me to Amy? And so having those super connectors as connections is really handy so that you can ask for those introductions. On the other side, the problem with super connectors is a lot of times they don't actually know who they're connected to. And then that, that, that strategy falls a little flat. But yeah, it's, it's absolutely okay to connect with colleagues, with influencers in your industry, 
uh, who might in, or, or, you know, strategic partners, maybe not business partners, but strategic partners where you share an audience, where you can help promote each other um, and get those in, 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 in the introductions. So yeah, that's a decent strategy too. Okay. Now I also have to mention, you know, a lot of my community, it's writers, creatives, and entrepreneurs, which pretty much covers everyone. But writers, I think in particular, have these challenges. So yeah. what what can authors who want to um, increase their, their network, yeah. um, increase their engagement, get seen? What are some good LinkedIn strategies for them? Yeah, absolutely. So connecting with other authors, um, I'm, I'm part of a small group of LinkedIn learning authors or instructors. And so, you know, we actually promote each other's work. The, the cool thing is, in most cases, even if it looks like we're competitors, you know, like my friend Michaela Alexis, she's also a LinkedIn guru, way cuter than I am. Um, but, you know, Not possible. no, seriously. But and also, pretty dang savvy too. And so I didn't know if I was allowed to swear or not on, on your Facebook live. So pre pretty danged savvy. And, um, but, but we're, but we're friends. Right. And so I promote her stuff. She promotes my stuff. And so as authors, for sure, you want to find other authors who are kind of doing really well on LinkedIn and replicate what they're doing. You want to look um, for other influencers in your field, maybe people who aren't authors, but maybe they're speakers, um, certainly people who work at publishing houses, people, you know, who, who work at different media houses, because once you're connected, there is a possibility that they're going to see your stuff. Now, the great thing about authors is we're content creators, right? We're, we're always writing something. And so we, and we're hopefully pretty good at it. <laughs> and so the, the quality of the content, if we put it out there regularly, is really going to be elevated to some of the other crap that's on LinkedIn. So <laughs> um, I would recommend getting consistent in your sharing on LinkedIn. And the nice thing about LinkedIn posts is you actually get 1300 characters, not words, but characters. So consider creating almost like a, a mini blog post that points to some kind of media asset that you have that people can click through to. Maybe it's a, a PDF of a chapter of your book. Maybe it's some of the resources that you share in your book. Um, maybe, you know, something around what, what your book is about or if you're speaker or author, what, what, or speaker, what your, your talks are about. Um, or if you create online content, what your video content is about and really utilize that, that 1300 characters, you know, address your buyer or address your audience, describe what's in the post or in the, you know, in the asset. Um, so they, they actually will go and click through to it. Um, use hashtags. Hashtags are a thing again on LinkedIn. I say always use like three popular hashtags and one unique hashtag or unique to you hashtag. Put calls to action in there. If you don't tell people to do something, they're probably not going to do it. And at mention, as I said earlier, at mention anyone relevant. Maybe there's another author. Maybe you're co-authoring a book. Maybe you both spoke at an event together. But at mention um, anyone else who might have a following themselves because it aligns you with them and it opens up potentially the article or the post to their audience as well. But make sure it's relevant. Don't just start throwing popular authors in there <laughs> if you don't know them and if it's not relevant. But since we already are cr content creators, we should be using that platform to create that great content, which shows up on our timeline, which we can um, feature in the featured section so that more people will see it. And, uh, you know, that consistency might help to get that content showing up in a, in a LinkedIn search and maybe even promoted to a hashtag community. So there's a, a lot of benefit to creating content for LinkedIn. Okay. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to like condense what you just said. Into <laughs> okay. No, because we were talking before about you want to speak to your buyer, but yeah. if you're an author, 
what you really want to do is showcase what you know. And mm -hmm. even if it's fiction, you're going to showcase yeah. that you know the rules of fiction, nonfiction. I think for authors like us, it's a little bit easier because we're dealing in real world, but maybe not so much. So looking for allegiances, sharing good content. And then, and you brought up another really good point, which is see what the people you admire do. I yeah. think we think it makes so much sense when we're talking Facebook and Twitter to view the social profiles, but LinkedIn, it's just as, if not more powerful to see what other people are doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, and that's the, the one cool thing about authors, like a friend of mine, he's a, he, he's a LinkedIn learning instructor and he's written a, I don't even know how many books, not, you know, business books, but he just, did a, a, a young adult um, science fiction novel, which I had no idea. I had no idea he did that. And, you know, for the longest time, he's like, oh, no, I, you know, I, I'm not going to share that with with anybody. Uh, this is, you know, this is business and that's life. But man, when he shared that, he finally did share it on LinkedIn that he had written this young adult um, sci-fi novel or fantasy novel, like all of a sudden, all of the rest of us who had also written mind you, not published, um, <laughs> science fiction novels in our community, like we all popped up and all of a sudden we had so much more in common with each other than we even realized before on a deeper level. So I love um, the fact that fiction novelists can, can share their content. Another cool thing I saw, and I wish I could remember the character, and this actually goes against LinkedIn's end user agreement, but I still think it was so cool. It's like Kilgore Trout. It wasn't Kilgore Trout, but it was like a Kilgore Trout type moment where the author had created a profile for his or her, I, I honestly can't remember, um, character. And the character had a life of the own and, 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 and the author was using like the timeline and the updates to kind of push forward this character's life that, you know, was in the book. And then of course there's an opportunity to buy the book. And I thought that is so clever, although it doesn't go against LinkedIn's end user agreement. And it was a lot of work, <laughs> but, but, you know, I just, that was such a clever way to, to use LinkedIn as this fictional character. <laughs> So there are, it's like with anything, with any social media, you can find creative ways to stand out, to showcase what you know and your expertise in a certain area. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next question, which is, and this is how we started off, is in what ways have you altered your LinkedIn activities and or profile? And the question mark did not copy from my copy pasting, but we all get this is a question. And if you're watching and you want to comment and let us know, please. But um, what about you? What what ways have you done it, or what ways do you recommend people alter? Because and we were talking right yeah. before we went on. I changed my headline because yeah. I my book, which came out in January, to help people figure out what they want. And, how to get it and you know to find plan and achieve their goals yeah it came out in january and by march everybody needs to reboot so i yeah, changed no kidding my headline so what are some other other recommendations do you have well that's it exactly so um some of the more obvious features on your profile that you can customize to address what's going on, you know, with all the disruption is the background image. So, you know, ours just simply asks a question. And, and so being able to kind of address your audience with what's going on right now with them. So if you're a nonfiction writer, if you're a, you know, if you're a business book writer and you know for a fact that what you write about like say your goals can help people out, especially right now, by all means, you know, put that up front and center. You're a lot of people are like, Oh no, you should, you know, that's, that's profiteering. You shouldn't be doing that while, you know, COVID-19 is around and you shouldn't be taking advantage of people that way. But uh, to me, it's kind of like, if I've got a service that can help you, and maybe keep you from going bankrupt or maybe support you when you're emotionally like a wreck right now, or maybe inspire you to like work out 
I, I need to read that book. Um, why wouldn't you share that? You know, it's kind of like the Marianne Williams speech, but why wouldn't you share that? Why wouldn't you let people know about how you can help them? So the background image is a good way to do that. Certainly, as you were saying, your headline, you know, mention what's going on right now. Don't, there's no point in ignoring it because it's here. And if what you do can help people in some way, even if you're a fantasy writer and you can help take them away from what's going on right now, although, oh my God, I feel like we're living in the twilight zone, like some other, anyway, I, I will get political. Wait, you mean we're not? <laughs> I know, right? Like, please let well, me wake up from this alternate universe, please. But anyway, if you can, if you can help people in some way, then like with your headline and you might customize your about section and certainly pull up any media into the featured section that speaks to what's going on. Um, there's no point in ignoring it. We all know it's here. And if you can help people, then you should be helping people. And I, I completely agree. The other the other point I wanted to add to yours is I think for the first two, three, four weeks, everybody was really hesitant. Yeah. What do I do? What do I say? How do I but we're it's business as usual as it's going to be right yeah. now anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So we got past the first month of shock, and some people are still in yeah. shock and readjustment. But yeah. if you personally for your business have gotten to where you can like breathe a little bit and can help people, yeah. then understand that if you're there, other people are there too and they want yeah. your help. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's funny. I, I, I thought about you because how many people, you know, decided that I'm going to be home for a month and then it turned into two months. It might be three to five months, might be a year. You just don't know. But how many people are like, I'm going to write my book. But then they didn't have the framework to help them to help them write the book. Or I'm going to learn how to play the guitar or I'm going to learn another language. Oh, my God. I was like, I totally was going to do the rewrite on um, my second, or my third book. I was going to do the rewrite on my third book. And then I was going to write a new book. And then I was going to learn French. Um, I was for sure going to go on a fast. And then I was going to exercise more, of which none of those things <laughs> happened. But that was because I didn't take advantage of the resources out there. And so if you have something that can be a resource to people <laughs> like me, um, you need to you need to continuously <laughs> like shove it in our faces, right? So that at some point we're like, okay. I will go learn French now. <laughs> well, and you don't have to do everything. I mean, no. I see that, that you're re-recording your course, which I'm sure has been on your list for oh, a yeah, while. Oh, yeah, I did, I did finish that. Yes. So <laughs> the other important thing to remember is if you do one thing or spend an hour a week or take commute time you used to have yeah. and, and put that towards inching your way towards reaching a different goal. That's a great use of this bonus time. I think yeah. that's another another thing. Think about it as like bonus time. Exactly. I don't drive to work anymore. So I, well, I worked from home before. So <laughs> I'm it just doesn't apply to me. About two and, a, two and a half seconds down my stairs. Yeah. Uh, for people who commute, who are now working from home, yeah. it's so important. And I have this, I another conversation I keep having, you need to set a stop time at the end of yeah. your day. Yeah. So your days are days and your weekends are weekends and you have evenings in there as well. Exactly. Because it's it was easy before to like get sucked into yeah. work. But before it's, when you had a commute, you know, on the on either end of your day mm -hmm. and, and the commute time again, walking back upstairs, but the commute <laughs> time for a lot of people, it, it was that liminal zone, right? Where you trans for tran you tr you transferred from one state to another state. Now we don't have that, and the kids are in, you know, while we're or the dog is in while you're working, but then your work is there while you should be having dinner with your family. So yeah, you're absolutely right. You need to set those cutoff times and have a life, even though life has changed. And use yeah. your commute to change your frame your commute from one room to the next. To yeah, change your framework <laughs> in your mind frame. And and use some of that downtime. 
And it doesn't have to be a lot of time. It can be 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a week, little bits of time add up. You know, the next time we talk, I'm going to ask you which of those things you said you were going to do, you're going to bring together. Um, To get back to LinkedIn, um, we we have Ken who said, and Ken comes to my my Sunday night goal chat. In the last year, I've changed my whole approach, try to think of myself as a resource. He totally gets it. Yep. And change professional headline. What would someone Google to find you? List that. Exactly. And this, I just have to share because I'm really kind of proud of it. This is my new LinkedIn headline. Yay. And I've changed it twice because (laughs) you know I I had something a little bit different. But on another conversation I had today, someone said, Deb, why isn't that on your website? And I said, well, (laughs) it's on my LinkedIn. And I looked and I'm like, no, it isn't. Well, it is now. No, that's perfect. I love that. And and you're right. There's a lot of times where the call to action or the motto or whatever you want to call it, you know, you're like, yeah, that should be on my website too, because it condenses everything you do into one or two you know, sentences and, and it's easy to remember and it's easy to share. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. And you already answered this kind of, sort of, <laughs> but I'm going to ask it again because I want your take. How often do you, or should you update your LinkedIn profile? Uh, How often do you post? What do you post? So yeah, you update your LinkedIn profile whenever it warrants it. Um, For some people that might be once every eight years. Um, For other people, you know, if you've got a new launch, if you've got a new product, if you've got a new book that just came out, if you got a really good article in in a major magazine, you know, what, if there is something that um, will help you position yourself better in the industry and you can pull it into some of those different aspects of your, of your profile, then absolutely you should make those changes. You know, the next time we have a pandemic, <laughs> like whoever would have in a million years thought that this was going to happen. Um, so anytime there's a big shift, whether you create it or, or outside forces creates it, you need to update your uh, LinkedIn profile. And then as far as posting, you know, it, it really depends. I would, I think if you could post at least one long form post, you know, using that 1300 characters every day, I think it could really elevate you and take you to the next level. Um, even I don't do it. I, I probably do it three or four times a week, maybe. Um, and then as far as using like social sharing tools, you can intersperse, but I would natively post if you can at least a few times a week, if not daily. Um, and, and it's it's not as bad as Twitter. It's somewhere between Twitter and Facebook as far as, you know, what are people going to see? But again, the more engagement you can get on a post, um, the sooner, then the more likely it is that LinkedIn's going to amplify that post out to a bigger audience. Got it. Another question that came out of the chat last night, which it, it kind of tags on, well, it tags on to everything a little bit, but <laughs> for people who have day jobs, or this person specifically said that she made her side hustle seem like a side hustle so she could get work. And she's trying to figure out how does she balance? How do you look for work when you're also doing a persona of having your own hustle? What what do you do for that balance? Yeah. So I'm going to pop here into chat. I actually just did a video on that. Um, it, it's a question that comes up a lot. I think, and, and it's funny, it, 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 it came up a lot and then I didn't hear the question for, you know, years. And I think because during, you know, during these times, people are trying to grow their side hustle because, or they realize I better grow my side hustle because I'm not going to have my day job for much longer. Um, and so the question, you know, what do I do if I have two businesses? What do I do to promote my my side hustle? Um, that's come up a lot recently. Um, so like I said, I did a video on it. We click on the link. But also, if your side hustle has some commonality with your day job, even if it's just how you're positioning yourself or the audience that you serve or, you know, anything, any commonality at all that you can pull into your profile, 
um, that you can use in your headline that you could talk about in your about section. You know, if you can pull out some commonality that speaks to both jobs, then do so. It's easy for me. I'm, I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I own a company. Um, and I work, do some, you know, side hustle work for LinkedIn, but it's all LinkedIn related, right? So even though it's four separate jobs, really, um, it's all LinkedIn related. And then if I wanted to pull in my fiction writing, um, it's still writing. So I can, there's a way that I can formulate that, that the headline and the summary and my story. Um, if it's completely opposite, then what I usually say is, you know, feed the business that you want to grow. Um, but don't feed your side hustle if your day job boss doesn't know about it and would fire you if they knew about it. So, uh, you know, keep in mind that. But if you are trying to grow your side hustle, then start mentioning it, mentioning it at least in the about section. Pull in media, maybe especially if you're a writer that you've created and by all means, create a, a business page, a LinkedIn company page that reflects the, the new side hustle. Because eventually, I mean, being a LinkedIn expert, speaker, and author, it was my side hustle. It was my side hustle when I joined LinkedIn. But had I been, uh, you know, attached to my day job, which was running a business center, Wiley never would have found my content on LinkedIn and invited me to write a book. Um, you know, Mike Stelzner wouldn't have found me from social media marketing world and invited me to speak at his, at his conference, blah, blah, blah. So you just have to decide how much real estate you want to give your side hustle and how much you want to grow it and then focus on that. But the video kind of goes through it all. Okay. And what if someone is a job seeker? and wants to highlight that while doing the side hustle stuff. So don't seem desperate. Like uh, um, back when I first started on LinkedIn, I, I worked with a lot of job seekers because that was the only audience for a long time. Um, right. And at the time we're like, oh, be the low hanging fruit. Like let people know you're available. Um, you can still let people know you're available, but I would not say that in the headline. I would just position yourself as an expert in your field or an expert in the field that you want to move into and then spend the rest of your about section kind of building up or proving that expertise, even if it's a relatively new field to you. Um, and then at the very end, you can say, you know, look, potentially looking for opportunities, but you don't want to come across as in your headline saying looking for opportunities because it's not desperate. A lot of people are and highest unemployment rate in you know, <laughs> a long, long time mm -hmm. uh, since the thirties, I think. Um, and yet recruiters still want, you know, they'd rather steal someone from another company than, than give a job to someone <laughs> who's looking. So if, so just position yourself as an expert and um, prove it through your your profile and kind of let the recruiters, the hiring managers come to you. Okay, so that's actually relevant whether or not you have a side hustle. That's oh, just true. that's just good sense. If you're seeking sense, yeah. <laughs> if you're looking for work, um, showcase what you know yep. and and why you are the best person to bring that to a company. Now if someone is without work, should they say that they are how did how do they do that? You know, don't if, lie. If never lie. <laughs> but um, but you know what it comes down to is, is until you get a W two, you're a ten ninety nine, right? So until you get that W two paying job, then you're a consultant, and so you can always be a consultant in your field a, or a ghost writer or you know wh whatever it is. But in in the cases of creators, I mean, we can always be consultants. I I, I certainly. <laughs> I've done that um, a lot. Uh, well, I guess I had to form my own company to get a job, but still. <laughs> uh, well, I love your story because I didn't realize that that's, that's really how you, you grew your yeah. LinkedIn expertise by doing something else, but showcasing your knowledge. And that's yeah. Yeah. it. I, I went through a phase and this was really funny because I've been a freelancer for years and I yeah. had day jobs until well, now, it's been a while since I had a day job, but 
I remember when I was working in corporate, I didn't tell anybody I was freelancing. Yeah. And one day, one of my bosses came and said, hey, Deb, I picked up a copy of Menace Magazine. Did you know there's another Deborah Eckerly who's a writer? <laughs> and I said, no, that's me. <laughs> really? So we had this whole conversation where I'm saying, no, I do that. Yeah. So I, I think that was the end of my hiding <laughs> the other <laughs> things that I did. Because I've always done a lot of, I've been a freelancer since, you know, I got out of school. Um, but I've always done, I've always had my passion projects, my freelancing, even yeah. when I did have day jobs. But like I said, after that, I'm like, the next job I worked at, I was like, okay, just so you know, I not only do this, I do this, this, and this. Yeah. And now if you don't have three things, people look right. at you like, you're like, really? you're a slacker, what man. <laughs> Well, you always should be doing something that makes you happy. And if your day yeah. job doesn't make you happy, you should have a side hustle or yeah. a hobby or a project or something that brings yeah. you joy so that can leak into the rest of your life. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. So we're going to go to the last question, which is what recommendations do you have for others to get the most out of LinkedIn? So, um, for someone who's watching this and this, it really amazes me because whenever I do any speaking, I'm like, okay, who's on LinkedIn? And yeah. usually it's less than a third. And I'm like, okay, then go back to that. After this session, <laughs> you're on a break, join LinkedIn because you're going to yeah. meet people and you're going to want to connect. It baffles me that not everybody is making use of this platform. So yeah. for people who have been like, I know I should do something. I don't know what to do. What do you recommend for them to dip their toe in? And yeah, then to jump. You know, exactly. <laughs> Take the time to build your brand um, on LinkedIn. If you've already got a website or you've got an active Facebook community, take elements of what you already have to as the building blocks of your LinkedIn profile. But the sad fact is if someone's searching on your name, and they don't find you on LinkedIn, you lose credibility. You know, even if you're a, you know, business to consumer fiction writer who like just doesn't need LinkedIn. Um, the fact is if someone's researching you and LinkedIn doesn't show up, it can actually hurt you. So I would say that LinkedIn's for almost everybody and there needs to be a small amount of commitment there, but take the time you know, build out your profile. Um, I'll, I'll throw in a link for a free ebook, uh, ebook.com. It's our free LinkedIn um, profile builder. So that will help you with the different elements that you need. But like I said, until you can really spend a whole lot of time, please feel free to borrow elements from, from content you already have. Or hire us at Vengresso. We're happy to write it for you. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and then make a small commitment. You know, if you're already sharing content on other platforms, then you can cheat for a while and use like a, a content sharing tool like Agora Pulse or Hootsuite or, you know, one of the hundreds of other ones out there. Um, but, a but eventually I would recommend spending a little time creating that native, that meaty native content um, that you can share. And then finally, you know, see who's a good strategic partner. You know, look at some of the publishing houses, look at some of the different media houses, see who you know, who knows someone there. Um, see who's in your industry, who's on LinkedIn and, and start inviting those people to connect because you've got that commonality. And then once you're connected, of course, better chance of that content that you're creating going out. And yes, you know, when we're training salespeople and marketing folks, yeah, you're looking at one to two hours on LinkedIn a day, but just to like feed the, feed the animal, it really doesn't take much more than about 15 to 20 minutes a day until it starts to pay off for you. And then you'll probably want to invest more time into it. But just doing those few things every day and every week could make a big difference. Okay. So, and I can, I can tie this into the dev method because it's determine your mission Yep. What do you want to get out of it? Exactly. Explore your options. What type of content do you already create? What makes sense for you? Brainstorm yep. your path and then make LinkedIn appointments. 
Yeah. If you are not naturally going to social media on a regular basis, put reminders and it yeah. doesn't have to be a long period of time. My timer, the timer is like my favorite tool because you can use it for anything. Yeah, so if true. you're if you're stuck on what to write, you set the timer for 15 minutes and it'll get you going. Or for social media, you set the timer so you don't fall into the social media. Event. Yes, <laughs> the opposite. Don't fall into the hole. But don't worry, you're not going to go down a rabbit hole on LinkedIn. That's the other thing. <laughs> Well, but with LinkedIn Live, you can. I mean, yeah, I, that's true. That's true. Because you do you do a show on Friday mornings, which is yep. on LinkedIn and Facebook Live simultaneously. And yeah. I'm always like, I'm just gonna go in and say hi. <laughs> and I get sucked into those conversations. So it's not a bad thing. No. And but yeah, it, it, and LinkedIn's coming out with stories too, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, I think live and stories are just a little bit more interesting if you've got the right person sharing them. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I don't, I don't get live yet. I don't have LinkedIn live yet. You have to apply for it. Oh, okay. A lot. I have, a lot. Okay. <laughs> a lot. I'll get no, the link. No. I, I, yeah. Oh, thank you. See, it's good that I mentioned it. So, what do you think? I know they've got events and groups. It's what is this? It's like. Facebook does something and then LinkedIn has to do it. And then LinkedIn does it. Facebook does way. something. And then like three and a half years later, after it's almost old news, then, then LinkedIn <laughs> goes for it. I, they're so old. They're so funny, Duddy. I mean, how long have stories been around on Insta? Like five years? Well, this is true, but didn't LinkedIn, they had groups and then they kind of yep. had groups and now they're making groups a thing again. I don't. Yeah, I suppose. Well, I, you know, LinkedIn needs to change the whole group's interface and they need to up level the um, the reporting and they need to add more features. So LinkedIn groups used to be great a long time ago. And then LinkedIn totally threw the baby out with the bathwater with that one. And now they kind of suck. So I don't give a lot of credence to groups. I think in order to have a good group on LinkedIn, you have to have a really diligent moderator and most people aren't. I mean, even social media marketing world got rid of their group. So I mean, they're no, yeah, got rid of their LinkedIn group. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with 48,000 followers at the time. So it's just it's a big commitment with not much payoff right now. We'll see. Um, events, LinkedIn brought events back. So yay. And <laughs> but again, like, you know, I think we knew like the beginning of March that going out and meeting and seeing people face to face was like kind of going to be put on the back burner for a couple months. LinkedIn just opened up virtual events on its events feature. Like just like last week. And, and you're right. It was just like a couple days yeah. and then you did a LinkedIn live like a yeah. day or two later. So yeah, I remember, I remember what about LinkedIn publisher? Are people still doing long form? You know, I, I um, so it's a little bit more do as I say, not as I do. I've got some friends who, who, because they're writing blog posts anyway, will copy and paste it over to LinkedIn and, and it really, you know, as far as formatting and, and making sure nothing looks screwy and adding links back in, it probably will only take you about 15 or 20 minutes to take a nice blog article or blog post and, and copy and paste it over to articles. LinkedIn is like the three-year-old child. And as soon as there's a shiny new toy, it forgets about its old toys. So because there's LinkedIn Live and because they're interviewing, uh, interviewing, introducing um, LinkedIn stories, I think it, it you know, the <laughs> LinkedIn articles or LinkedIn publishers, just the poor, poor forlorn, forlorn teddy bear in the corner that LinkedIn forgets about, unless someone else goes and picks it up and goes, look at my article. So um, I have seen some articles go viral and LinkedIn, LinkedIn has this thing called subscriptions, which it benevol benevolently gifts um, to magical people. And I don't know how it does that. Um, but I do know that you have to publish an article regularly, somehow catch the LinkedIn editor's attention, and they might, you know, deem you worthy enough to give you a subscription status, which just means that your article goes um, out to a bigger audience in an email. But, but again, 
don't know quite how all that magic happens. So the so short, the short answer, answer is I don't do much with it. Um, and I've seen <laughs> some people have a lot of success with it. So I think it depends similar to groups, how much effort you want to put in and is it worth the payout? Okay. So the other short answer is to do updates at the character count limit. Yep. You'll be a lot better off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's what I do. Okay. So yeah. Jim Katzman, Jim. he posted this a while ago. I don't even yes. know if he's still watching. So hi, Jim, if you are. And hi, Adriel, who's another one of my regulars on Gold Chat, nice. poked over to say hi. So waving. So Jim wants to know, has LinkedIn tightened up its endorsement process? I, I have. I soured on getting endorsed by people I barely knew for skills I didn't have. So what's up with that? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, for a while you could get a whole bunch of endorsements from people you didn't know for things you didn't do. Um, yeah. LinkedIn, I, I don't know if you've realized, seen it recently or endorsed anyone recently, but now um, both on the browser and on your phone, it makes you say how you know them, how skilled they are, you know, and so you have to jump through a lot more hoops to give people endorsements. And so I've noticed also endorsements have gone down a fair amount, but there's goes my dog. Um, but it's also, you know, uh, the thing with endorsements, love, hate. Yeah. <laughs> Especially earlier on. <laughs> really? Like, I don't even do that. But um, like, I literally put under underwater basket weaving just to see. And I got 73 endorsements on underwater basket weaving before I find, I wish I'd left it now. Uh, before I closed it. Huh? You should have left it. I would have endorsed it. I should have. Because I am a scuba diver and my mother was one of like a, um, a world renowned basket weaver. So actually I could potentially be an underwater basket weaver. But um, but yeah, 73 endorsements. But here's the thing. And the reason you don't want to ignore them is because every time someone endorses you, it's almost like that keyword is added again to your profile. So you're, you're that much more findable under that particular keyword search term or skill. Um, and people are still swayed by the 99 plus. There you go. So, okay. So before I'm, I'm teeing it up, I'm going to, I'm going to have you give like a bonus goal for everybody to do for LinkedIn. But first, where can people find you? Sure. So probably, yeah. the, okay, May, since you pulled it up, how about vengresso.com? Yeah, my company's vengresso.com. So you can find me and my other three founders and, and our all our contractors and employees there. Um, but yeah, if you if you have more questions, you can actually um, go to the about section at vengresso, one S, vengresso, it's not soup, one <laughs> vengresso.com and book some time with me. Um, if you Google LinkedIn expert, my LinkedIn profile's I think still like the second or third thing that shows up. So um, feel feel free to in, invite me to connect. You'll have to go. Um, there's a follow button because I have a LinkedIn Live and I'm at my limit. But to the right of the follow button is either more or three dots, just depending on if you're on mobile or, or desktop. So please feel free to invite me to connect and um, just customize the invitation. Let me know that you heard me on uh, Deborah's show and I'd be more than happy to connect. But if you just have some questions, just reach out to me through Vengresso. That's perfect. Okay, and you can find me, thedevmethod.com. I'm at the Dev Method everywhere and I'm here every Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific and every Sunday night on Twitter at the Dev Method where we have the goal chat Twitter chat. And if you are curious uh, to learn more about my book, go to your goal guide roadmap.com. Okay, then. And <laughs> now it's, it's making faces at me. But <laughs> that's okay, because technology, <laughs> yay. Yeah. Um, this has been it doesn't matter. LinkedIn, like I said, it ends up as a gold chat topic several times a year because <laughs> everybody needs it. It's the sort yeah. of thing that you can't just say, oh, I filled out my profile 10 years ago. Right. It's fine. <laughs> One thing I always tell people is that when you start a new job, you should add it right away because yeah. if you don't, and then you add it, people are going to raise their eyebrows at you. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Much better to like embrace it off the bat and yeah. not leave people wondering when all of a sudden, if you're always on LinkedIn, you never have to worry that people are going to be suspicious of you. That's right. 
Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure where that tangent came from. I think it's because <laughs> I've had to give that advice all the time because yeah. it's a red flag. Yeah. Oh, I want to make sure I want to settle in before I put up my new profile, my new role. Well, really? Yeah. You can always get rid of it, but exactly. adding is going to be a challenge. There is a delete button if things don't work out. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so non-optimistic of me. Okay, let me switch <laughs> back into dev mode. What can people do today to just add a little bit of flair to their LinkedIn? Well, and it's exactly that, you know, add a little flair, add some personality. The best LinkedIn profiles out there are the ones that you can tell the person's personality in the writing. And again, that's why your audience has an edge over, say, engineers. Um, <laughs> unless you're an, an engineer author, you know, like like the guy who wrote, he was, who wrote Mars. He was a, he was an engineer, I think, wasn't he? But anyway, um, there's, there's few and far between. So let that personality come through in your voice when you create your LinkedIn profile, especially the about section, certainly in whatever content you share, um, let that voice come out. Cause in the end, that's really what's going to differentiate you from the other person who has the exact same, you know, the exact same job as you, the exact same experience as you, the exact same education as you, you have the personality and they don't. And that's the big differentiator. I love that. It's all about the personality. It is. So true. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it's something else that I say all the time. A lot of people do what you do, but only you are you. That's exactly only right. You have the background, the experience, the interests yeah. that make up the persona you share to the world. Well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of profile writers out there who they've just, they've got a formula and they stick to that formula and you can tell you know, these, some of these companies, cause all the profiles look exactly the same, but you, with Vengresso and Devnosis, you know, we interview each person and, and, and Deb's a phenomenal, as you can imagine, interviewer. And, she, you know, she pulls out the people's personalities. So when, when she writes the profiles, they are in that unique voice. Um, and so that's, you know, do that for yourself. Allow that unique voice to, to shine through. That was so sweet. Thank you. Well, it's true. Well, I like talking to people. I'm sure that shocks no one. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vivica Von Rosen, for joining us, for sharing all this great information. Again, look for Vivica on LinkedIn. She does a live show every Friday morning. It's awesome. If you have any LinkedIn questions or write to me and I will connect you. Um, I'm Deborah Eckerling, again, author of your goal guide, founder of The Dev Method, and you can connect with me on LinkedIn or anywhere at The Dev Method. And please join us again, Goal Chat, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific, Goal Chat Live every Monday at 4. Thanks again. Everybody go do something on your LinkedIn profile like right now. <laughs> right now. You'll feel really good about it and let us know in the comments how it works for you. Awesome.